Hi everyone, this video will go over all of the questions for the Unit 5 Worksheet 2. Here's question number 10. Two long straight wires are hanging parallel to each other one centimeter apart. Let's make a sketch of that. So the distance between the wires is one centimeter. Uh, the current in wire 1 is 5 amps. And the current in wire 2 is 10 amps in the same direction. So wire 1, wire 2, we've got a current of 5 amps and a current of 10 amps in the same direction. Which of the following best describes the magnetic force per unit length felt by the wires? Okay, so we know from Newton's third law that when two objects exert forces on each other, that those forces are equal and opposite. So if I just look at a section of wire, I know, first of all, I know that these wires will attract. So current in same direction attracts. Uh, the reason for this is that if I were to draw the magnetic field around the wire, uh, the magnetic field would be coming out of the page here and going into the page here. And of course, the other wire would be identical. But in the center here, <clears throat> where we've got magnetic fields going in opposite directions, that is similar to having a bar magnet, a north-south bar magnet, with a magnetic field going from left to right, and then another bar magnet with a magnetic field going right to left. So when we have magnetic fields in opposite directions, we have attraction. Since here we've got magnetic fields in opposite directions, we've got attraction. And that's a good thing. It's also just a good thing to remember that when we have the current in the same direction, we have an attraction. Now, third, Newton's third law says that the force of wire two on wire one should be equal and opposite to the force of two on one. So those two forces should be equal and opposite, even if the currents are not the same. It's the same idea as if we had um, two planets or two, a star and a planet of different masses, but the, the force that one exerts on the other is equal and opposite. So when I'm looking at my selections here, when it's saying that the force is twice, um, one force is twice the other, I know that that cannot be correct because of Newton's third law. Okay, the next thing that I know is that the force, let's see, the force on wire one, on wire one, on wire one, the force on wire one is, is um, toward wire two. So really, D is my only possible answer, even without doing any math. Now, if I did want to do some math, what I would need to do is think about, okay, if I'm going to figure out the force per unit length on wire one, first I would need the magnetic field at that point caused by wire 2 and the magnetic field caused by wire 2 would be the permeability times the current of wire 2 over 2 pi r um, and let's see and then the force on wire 1 would be equal to that external magnetic field from wire 2 times the current in wire 1 um, times the length, and the force per unit length would just be this magnetic field times the current. And, um, and this is a formula that we see sometimes, that's why I bring it up. B2 then is mu naught, or the permeability, times I2, and then we've got times I1 over 2 pi r. So I could go ahead and plug in those numbers and figure out the force per unit length, and, and indeed I would find out um, that it matches. I'll plug it in here. 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th 
times 5 amps times 10 amps over 2 times pi times 0 0.01. So the distance was 1 centimeter apart. Um, that gives me 0 0.001 newtons per meter. Okay, let's try number 11. The velocity of a particle of charge 4 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. So remember, charge is Q. And mass, 2 times 10 to the negative 4th kilograms. Mass is M. Is perpendicular to a 0.1 Tesla magnetic field. Okay, so we've got a magnetic field. If the particle speed is 3 times 10 to the negative 4th meters per second... What is the acceleration of the particle due to the magnetic force? Okay, so let's sketch a picture of this. Let's have the magnetic field going into the page. And let's have the particle. Looks like it's a positive particle, so let's have it have a velocity like that. It's gonna go into the magnetic field. And then I'm going to take my right hand and actually I better move this because the way that I have drawn this, the force, oops, the force on this thing, if I use the right hand rule, the force is going to be inward. So the path is going to be a semicircular path and this force will continue to be perpendicular to the dotted line and that's our magnetic force so the magnetic force is a centripetal force now the magnetic force on a charged particle in a magnetic field is equal to q the charge times v the velocity times b and the, the formula for centripetal force is mv squared over r so now i am going to um, solve this Oh, I'm going to actually do one more step first, pardon me. The question is asking for acceleration. Acceleration is V squared over R. So um, the centripetal force, or centripetal acceleration, pardon me, is going to be QVB over M. So I have Q, I have V, I have B, and I have M, and I would plug it into this formula. And when I do that, I get 0 0.06 meters per second. Let's look at question 12. In the figure below, what is the direction of the magnetic force FB? Um, so here I have a negative particle, negatively charged particle. So I'm using my left hand. And just a reminder that the B field is represented by my fingers. This is called the motor principle, this, this right hand or the right or left hand rule. Um, the motion of the particle is my thumb. And then my palm is going to give me the direction of the force. So my palm is pointing out of the page, so the direction of the force is going to be um, out of the page. So that's our answer, out of the plane of the page. Okay, in question 13, in the figure below, what must be the direction of the particle's velocity v? Okay, so we've got a positively charged particle. And it's, it's the same right-hand rule here, or in the, well, the last one was a left-hand rule because it's a negative charge. Now I've got a positive charge. But the fingers are still going to be the B field. The um, force is still going to be my palm. So here my palm is pointing down. B field. And then my thumb would be coming out of the page. My thumb is the um, my thumb is the direction of the charge. So that would be out of the plane of the page. All right, let's keep it going. Number fourteen. Due to the magnetic force, a positively charged particle executes uniform circular motion within a uniform magnetic field B. If the charge 
is Q and the radius of the path is R, which of the following expressions gives the um, magnitude of the particle's linear momentum? So this is the same as same scenario as number 11. I'll draw it again. Repetition is good at this point. So here's a B field going into the page. We're going to have a charge Q go into that B field. The force then would be in this direction. It will create a semicircular path. The force stays perpendicular to the circle. Okay, so when we set this up, we're saying again that magnetic force is equal to centripetal force or QVB, V is velocity, is equal to MV squared over R. And um, look what happens here. One of the V's cancels. So we get QB equals MV over R. And now we're looking for momentum. Momentum is MV. So MV would just equal QBR. So that is choice A. Number 15. A straight wire of length 2 meters carries a 10 amp current. How, how strong is the magnetic field at a distance of 2 centimeters from the wire? So there's a formula for this. The scenario, again, is that I've got a wire. It's carrying 10 amps of current. And I want to know how strong this B field is when the radius is um, 2 centimeters. So the formula for the B field around a current carrying wire is permeability times current over 2 pi r. The length of the wire we actually don't need in this scenario. So this uh, number, this permeability is 4 pi times 10 to the 7th. Current was 10, and then we're going to divide by 2 times pi times 0.02. And when we solve that, when we solve that, we get um, that the B field is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth Tesla. And that's choice D. Number 16, in the figure below, what, what is the magnetic field at point P, which is midway between the two wires? Okay, in this scenario, the, um, the, the magnetic fields, ah, I'm sorry, in this scenario, the currents are going in the same direction. And so um, if I were to sketch the magnetic field here, it would look like that. And for this one, now, in a previous um, problem, I showed you how the magnetic fields at that point are going in opposite directions. For the um, above the wire, it's coming out of the page, and below the top wire, it's going into the page. And those magnetic fields going in opposite directions will actually cancel. So the magnetic field there is zero. Okay, number 17. A charge moves in a circular orbit of radius r due to uniform magnetic field. If the velocity of the charge is doubled, the orbital radius will become what? Okay, so that takes us back to this scenario. Um, so I'm not going to draw it again because we've seen it several times now. So we ha again, we have a charged particle moving in a magnetic field. We know that centripetal force is equal to magnetic force. So mv squared over r is equal to qvb. And in both of these situations, v is velocity. Um, so the question is, uh, what happens when velocity is doubled? Um, so and we, what I want to do is I want to solve this for radius. So to solve this for radius, I'm going to multiply both sides by r and divide both sides by qvb. So I'll get mv squared over QVB, and that simplifies to MV over QB. So if the radius is MV over QB, and if I were to double 
the velocity, what happens to the radius? Oops. If I double the velocity, then uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to have an amount that is twice um, the original radius. So our answer there is 2r. Number 18, a proton enters a magnetic field of 10 tesla and an electric field of 2,000 newtons per coulomb in such a way that it passes through both fields undeflected. The velocity of the proton will become what? Okay, so let's see if we can figure out a way to explain this. I'm going to go back to my picture. For some reason, I always find it easiest to have the B field either going into the page or coming out of the page. Okay, then I'm going to have my electron. Um, my electron's going to go into this B field. Now, what we know from the right-hand rule, uh, well, actually, first of all, I would use a left-hand rule here, right? Because it's an electron. So what we know from the, from the left-hand rule for this scenario is that the force on this thing would be in that direction. It would be down. So we need an electric field that's going to counteract that force. So the electric field that would counteract that force, I would have two charged plates, one above, one below, and this thing is an electron. So if I were to put positive charges up here and negative charges down here, that would create a situation where the magnetic field, I'm sorry, the magnetic force would be counteracted by this electric force. So I'm going to set those two things equal to each other. You actually don't need to draw a picture to solve this, but I do think it's good for us to be able to picture it. Now the formula for electric force is QE. You may remember that the definition of an electric field was the force on a charge divided by the amount of charge. And the formula for um, the force on a charged particle in a magnetic field is QVB. Um, so let's see. So what happens? Oh, it's a proton, but the Q's cancel. Look at that. So the electric field is 2000 newtons per coulomb and V is unknown and B is 10 Tesla. So the math on this is really easy. We're just going to divide and we'll get 200 meters per second. All right, moving right along. Number 19, three centimeters from a long straight wire, the magnetic field produced by the current is determined to be equal to three times 10 to the negative fifth Tesla. The current in the wire must be what? Okay, we've seen this scenario before. We've got a wire with a current in it and we're looking at the magnetic field around that current carrying wire. The formula for this is permeability times current over two pi r. In this case, um, we're given the B field, three times 10 to the negative fifth Tesla. Permeability is four pi times 10 to the negative seventh. Let's see, the current is unknown and the distance is three centimeters, 0.03. Oops, two times pi times 0.03. So um, we would solve that for I and I am gonna skip the algebra on that. When we solve it for I, we get 4.5 amps. Number 20, two wires are placed parallel to each other. The direction of current in each wire is the same. How will these wires interact? Okay, we've seen this before now. When the wires, uh, when the current in the wires is going in the same direction, they will attract each other. And again, it's because their magnetic fields um, will be in opposite directions and uh, that represents an attraction. Number 21, a point charge of one microcoulomb moves with a velocity V into a uniform magnetic field of B directed to the right as shown above, actually as shown below. What is the direction of the magnetic force on the charge? I took a picture of my hand with this um, problem. I don't know how well you can see that. So my thumb represents the charge 
and it's going into the page. My fingers are the B field, and then my palm tells me that the force is going to be down. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to put that option on here, so many apologies for that. The force is downward. Okay, number 22. Um, an electron moves to the right in uniform magnetic field that points into the page. Okay, we've seen this a few times now as well. Okay, we're going to have an electron moving to the right. What is the direction of the electric field that could be used to cause the electron to travel in a straight line? Okay, so the left-hand rule for an electron tells me that the force is going to be down, and we saw one similar to this before. Um, since it's an electron, if I put positive charges on top, negative charges on the bottom, that would create an electric field that is pointing downward, and that would um, that electric field would counteract the effect of the magnetic field. So the answer is A. Uh, number 23, uniform magnetic field is directed into the page yet again. An electron enters this field with an initial velocity V to the right. Which of the following best describes the path of the electron while it is still within the, the, elect, within the magnetic field? So the force, when we have force and velocity perpendicular, it causes the object to turn. And what happens is the force continues to be perpendicular to the path and the object continues to turn. So it's going to go in a circular path. And in this case, it's going to bend downward. Um, again, when force is perpendicular to velocity, we get circular motion. That is the big idea there. Um, number 24. A uniform magnetic field is directed into the page. As an electron enters this field, is this the same question? Oh, no. Um, with the initial velocity to the right, the electron travels a distance d measured along its path before exiting the field. How much work is done? Okay, in this case, the answer is zero because force is perpendicular to velocity, which means that the force exerted is perpendicular to the distance. And you may remember that work is force times distance times the cosine of the angle. Well, if the angle, oops, if the angle is 90 degrees, um, it's zero because the cosine of 90 is zero. So no work is done when force and distance are perpendicular. Let's see, number 25. Two parallel wires carry currents in opposite directions as shown right there. What direction, in what direction will the white right hand wire experience a force? So we saw before that if the current's in the same direction they attract, these are going to repel. So the force of one on two is gonna to be to the right. Incidentally, the force of two on one is gonna to be to the left. Um, so, but we're interested in one on two, and that's to the right. Okay, we are at the last question. A proton moves in a straight line. Which of the following combinations of electric or magnetic fields could not allow this motion? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to try to draw a picture of each one here. A, only an electric field pointing in the direction of the proton's motion. Okay, so what would that look like? Remember that an electric field is created by, uniform electric field is created by charge plates. And so there is, um, there's that electric field. Now, if I put a proton in this field and the proton were moving that way, um, that would allow the motion proton would move in a straight line. Okay, in fact, it would accelerate, but they're not asking us anything about um, its speed. Okay, uh, let's look at part 
B, or yeah, option B, only a magnetic field pointing opposite the direction of the proton's motion. Okay, so let's say that I had a, a north end of a magnet and the south end of a magnet here. We'll really mix it up. We'll have a magnetic field in the plane of the page, not going into the page like every other example I drew today. Um, let's see. Uh, and let's say that the proton was going opposite this direction. So what we know about magnetic fields and electric things with electric charge is that in order for a force to exist, the motion has to be perpendicular to the field. So there would be no deflection because the velocity is parallel to the field. If it were even slightly not parallel, then it would be deflected or it would curve, but that is not the case. Okay, let's look at part option C. Only an, an electric and a magnetic field, each pointing perpendicular to the proton's motion. Okay, so here I'll have a Draw my electric field like this, and we'll have the um, proton moving through like that. Now this electric field would deflect the proton, right? The proton would want to go like that. Okay, now let's set up a magnetic field. Let's say that the magnetic field Oh, let's go back to our old friend here. Let's say the magnetic field was going into the page. If the magnetic field was going into the page with my um, right hand rule here, that would make it wanna go this way. So it could go straight. Could go straight. Um, what about, I'm gonna have to think about another scenario here. What if it was going, what if we had this though? Same electric field, same proton. Proton wants to go like that. What if I have a magnet like this? So that the magnetic field is like that. Now, oh, that's not perpendicular, is it? That doesn't matter. Okay, let me back that up. Uh, what if I did, I'm just trying to look at all the options here. What if I had the north end of a magnet here too, and the south end of a magnet here too, and the magnetic field was going like that. Let's see, I would use the right hand rule. Okay, we're still gonna get deflection up that way. So it looks like it looks like it could go straight in that scenario. Okay, how about a magnetic field pointing perpendicular to proton's motion? Oh, ooh, ooh. The right hand rule tells us that that's not going to allow it to go in a straight line. It's going to make it go in a circular path. And then for E, magnetic field pointing in the direction of the proton's motion, if it's parallel, kind of like we had in B, then um, we're not gonna have any deflection. So the, prop, the answer to that one is D. All right, thanks for listening to this speed round of worksheet two.